The origins of police can be traced back to the colonies. As far back as the 1630s, the men who volunteered to protect the colonists were identified only as the Night Watch. In the South, the history was a little different. The first form of policing began in 1704 in the Carolina colonies as the Slave Patrol. Their job? To capture runaway slaves. These patrol groups were made up of as many as six men on horseback who would ride carrying whips, ropes, and guns. They made it a point to release terror in the enslaved communities. The thinking? As long as the enslaved were afraid, they would not rise up, fight back, or run away. These patrol groups were prominent until the Civil War and eventually gave way to the Ku Klux Klan. By the mid-1800s, the North was looking for a way to control the growing number of immigrants. The original settlers argued that the new immigrants were ruining American society. The Night Watch was useless against those the settlers described as lewd, disorderly, and prostitutes. The first official police force started in 1838 in Boston. Seven years later, New York would establish its own police force, followed by Chicago, New Orleans, and Cincinnati. But the system was far from perfect. Time magazine reported that America's political machine had produced corrupt politicians and corrupt police officers. By the early 1900s, the man known as the father of modern policing, August Vollmer, introduced a new form of policing. This new system stressed the importance of social work and psychology in police work. It also created a separate system for juveniles so they would not have to be tried or punished as adults. The 1960s marked a turning point. African Americans began to challenge the way police treated them. There were boycotts, peaceful protests, and riots, challenging racial profiling and police brutality. Police responded with harsh tactics, including tear gas, attack dogs, and high-pressure water hoses. Throughout the 21st century, police have been called out over and over again for their treatment of African Americans and other minorities. As a result, some policies like stop and frisk in New York have been reformed, and many departments have implemented body cameras to record encounters with police. But the senior curator at the National Museum of African American History and Culture, William Pretzer, says the real change boils down to this, eradicating the social inequalities that perpetuate unbalanced police-community relationships, relationships that for centuries have sustained a distrust and frustration on both sides. For Another View, I'm Lisa Godley.